Thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Today we are going to dive into my flight of my 5 inch Wildman Punisher on the Almighty Aerotech M4500 Super Thunder. We're going to pull some data associated with the flight. If you'll recall, one of my more recent uploads was setting up my electronics bay for this flight and getting everything ready to go so that I could just go put it on the pad after we flew the 12 inch Punisher. So before we dive into all the logistics and data and info and everything like that, I'd like you guys to just see the flight. So here it is. So it looks like it's drifting in a little bit more. All right, five inch Punishers, M4500s. Let's go. And if, if Bob's okay with it, we're going to drag race them. We gotta go see. Okay, it looks like it's gonna be out towards the water. And Rick is the boy guy who's gonna play executed gift shot. It's a wild man kid, weighs 207 pounds, 27 pounds. He's gonna fly on him as in lots of money, 4,500 um, super thunder propeller. Main check him out at 1,000 feet. And at the same time, Taylor Jesse, who's been released from jail just this weekend, he's gonna fly the Punisher 5. It's a wild man kid, weighs 25 pounds, which is actually 2 pounds lighter. Same motor, M4500. Main gonna come out at 700 feet. Folks, it's not every day you can see an M motor drag race, but out on the 60s, I do have your attention. We're gonna go up in five, four, three, two, one, duck. Try that again in five, four, three, two, one, launch. Seven miles away. I'm pretty sure this went further than Taylor's when he flew an M1939. But the main came out. Take wins where you can. This is why you buy a tracker, folks. All right, now that you guys have seen the flight, it's time to dig into the data as stored on my onboard flight computers. But first, I want to tell you about today's video sponsor, Factor. Factor is a meal delivery service that delivers fresh meals directly to your doorstep. Factor chef created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium science-backed nutritional quality. No more meal prep, no more dishes, no more unhealthy fast food. Factor offers the most convenient way to eat well while eating right. Factor's menus are updated weekly and include 27 plus meals and 34 plus add-on options so you can choose your favorite meals or you can let them craft your order based on your taste preferences and meal history. Best of all, there's no prep and no mess. Factor cuts out stressful meal planning and extensive prepping so meals come together in minutes, taking the guesswork out of what to make for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Factor even offers meals for those looking to follow keto, low calorie, or vegan and vegetarian lifestyles. Some of you may or may not know that I used to weigh 325 pounds and I lost 100 pounds by simply making healthier food choices and changing the way I thought about eating. Having Factor on your side to help with something like that can be monumentally helpful and the availability of their different diet and lifestyle meals can make it a no-brainer for you. So whether you're looking to lose some weight or just switch up to a slightly healthier lifestyle or save a bunch of time by having meals that you can just cook and go without having to prep or make any messes, click the link in the description and use the coupon code that is also in the description for 50% off your first box. Thank you once again to Factor. Now let's dig into my electronic. So first and foremost, we're gonna dig into the Missileworks RRC2 Plus. This is a great, cheap, affordable altimeter. However, it does not have any data logging capabilities other than the last flight altitude. But just for the sake of due diligence and for the sake of comparison, we're gonna fire up the Missileworks right now and you're gonna hear some beeps and it's going to read out the altitude of the last flight, which was this one. And we can keep that in mind for comparison sake for the perfect flight stuff. One. 14. 14. Okay. So the missile works is saying it went 14,191 feet. And again, because it's such a simple altimeter, 
that's all the data we get to pull off the missile works however the missile works rsc 2 l is also available and has a lot more data logging capability and the ability to plug in an lcd screen shows you velocity and altitude and all sorts of cool stuff like that we're gonna go plug my perfect flight stratologer cf into the computer pull the data off of it and see what we've got let's take a look at this data in the perfect flight data cap program this program is extremely old and does not like to run all that well on Windows 10 or Windows 11, but it will work, and oh dear. Well, let's start with the good here. The perfect flight data shows that we achieved an altitude of 14,118 feet, and a discrepancy of only 73 feet between two different altimeter manufacturers and two different barometers is not bad at all. Of course, as with any flight with two altimeters, you always go with the higher one. Why? Because it's a bigger number and that's cooler. Now, let's take a look at this velocity graph. If you look at the right side, it says the exit through the gift shop achieved a max velocity of over 3,000 feet per second. That's above Mach 2.6 and around 2,000 miles an hour. Wow, can that really be? At those speeds, you would see some substantial paint loss and the decals would most certainly be gone. My rocket did get a big gash in the side of it, but it had to have been from the rod whip from flying on a 10-foot rod when we only needed about 8 inches to be stable. Let's dig a little deeper here. The graph shows a bunch of discrepancies in the data from 0 seconds to 1 second. That's fine, given that the barometer is susceptible to wind changes or, say, the effects of another supersonic rocket taking off right next to it. Perhaps the change in air from Taylor's rocket gave my altimeter a bit of a hard time, but that's just my theory. However, if we take a look at the graph from the one second mark and ignore the brief part where it says the rocket made its way down to an impressive negative 49 feet for a split second, we notice a climb to 1801 feet from one second to two seconds on the graph. That works out to about 1800 feet per second or about Mach 1.6. That, my friends, is pretty dang close to what both Roxim and Rassero estimated in terms of velocity, so I'm pretty inclined to believe that number is about where we landed. Incidentally, that's about the same max velocity as the Aerotech N1000 would take this rocket to, which I've been a little bit afraid of considering putting in it because I wasn't sure the fins would completely handle it. Now it seems like they probably will. I can't afford that. Mom! I feel like I need to clarify that that's a joke and I haven't lived with my parents for five years. Moving on. Thank you guys once again for tuning into another episode of Rocket Vlogs. My name is Brayden and I hope you enjoyed this video. As usual, I'd like to give a special thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names are scrolling across the screen right now. If you want to see behind the scenes content and help support the channel, you can visit patreon.com slash rocketvlogs or click the join button below the video. Check out rocketvlogs.com for merch. Somebody in the last video asked if I was going to upload videos of the actual launch days from Argonia and while I was there, I was super busy flying my own rocket so I did not get to film a ton of stuff. However, I am going to upload a video on the footage that I did catch. It's just probably not going to be very long and certainly not nearly as long as the usual launch videos that you guys are used to seeing. However, we do have some of those coming up. I'll be at LDRS and other than LDRS and Airfest, I probably won't be making it to very many big launches this year because of other life situations we've got going on. However, I do have plenty of my own rocket projects that need situating. We have my little John, which is sort of an in-progress build that still needs an electronics bay built. We have my five and a half inch BSD Horizon that I fiberglass. You may or may not have seen that, but I have to finish that rocket. I have to finish my Honest John. The Honest John is the next on the docket for flying. It's flying on an M650, two J570s and two J350s. My friend Conway made some igniters for that, so that should be super cool. So I also have two other L motors, a big 75K motor, a few other K motors, and I think two other M motors that still need to be flown. So. I promise you there is going to be plenty of rocket stuff a coming. I'm just a little bit busy at the moment with work and everything else that's going on. The most helpful thing you can do for free is press the subscribe button and press the like button and help this channel grow and we can keep the cool rocket project coming. Projects? Project. A lot of them. Not just one. Anyway, my name is Braden. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.